Welcome to another episode of the Growth Cast. I'm Phil Foster. I cannot even believe it. Episode 13, lucky number 13 on a Sunday evening. October 17th, 2021. I cannot even believe it. We are two weeks away from November. Unbelievable. And at the end of this month, you know what that means. Halloween time. Some good Halloween candy. I know everybody out there is like, oh, it's the devil. Sugar. It's the end of the world. You're going to die if you have a piece of Halloween candy and enjoy yourself. If you're not fasting 21 hours a day and drinking five gallons of water and sunning your balls and having black coffee by the pot. Anyways, episode 13. Welcome to the growth cast, the savage way to take what you want in health, wealth, and relationships. I'm Phil Foster. I'm so glad you took the time out of your day to hop in here on the stream. If you don't catch it live, all good. Enjoy. Hopefully you'll take some of this information that you hear tonight and put it to good use, especially if you're in the weight room and you're trying to put some size on because tonight's episode is how I know you're not eating enough for your goals. It's interesting to me when you watch uh, the general public in weight training or in fitness in general, uh, they have a hard time understanding what it really takes to put some size on, get some muscle mass on that frame. And uh, it's there's this there's this unfortunate thing going on where people inherently they want to lose weight and build muscle, and you can do that for some period of time. It's called recomping, right? But then eventually, your body says, "Okay, not anymore. You need to feed me." And with the current culture going on and what everything is said to us through social media avenues and the latest trends and fitness crazes, um, it's okay. You need to be fasting. You need to stay away from carbs. Oh, they're the worst things for you in the world. Uh, they don't help you. They just hurt you. They cause you to become diabetic. Um, if you don't fast, uh, you're not one of us, so to speak, or if you're, if you're carnivore or whatever, the big thing is, is in the end, when you start living a lifestyle of limits like that, and you're trying to put size on in the gym, it's just not going to work. Now, I will say there is some outliers out there, and I'm saying that you can put some size on, but you will not get the gains that you see on social media if you do not feed your body. And what does that look like, right? You know, if it depends on the goals that you're trying to get to. Uh, normally if you're a little bit overweight, if you're carrying some extra weight around the middle, uh, like we all have in one shape or fashion in our time on this planet, I will tell you that it's good to lose that extra adipose tissue or that extra fat first, before you go ahead and start a program where you're trying to put some muscle size on. It's very difficult if you're already metabolically compromised to continue to feed your body to get the gains because you already have a bunch of extra energy sitting on your frame as it is. So one way to combat that and to work through that is to strip that extra fat or that extra energy off your frame and then move from there. So what's it look like to eat enough for your training? So say you've metabolically uh, straightened out and you've lost the extra weight or you're just about down to about 10% body fat and you want to start putting on some muscle and you're one of those guys or gals out there that says, okay, well, I'm going to fast four days a week for uh, discipline. You know, I'm going to do the 16, eight or whatever the heck it is. And, but I'm still going to weight train and I'm going to eat high quality foods, but guess what? The size doesn't come on and that's because you're not eating enough realizing that you are literally spinning your wheels and wasting your time in the gym is a big thing for people. And they just can't seem to grasp it because you see all these folks on social media that already have these physiques, or you might see an outlier out there that, you know, he can wolf two or three ribeyes and no carbohydrates and put size on, or is he just maintaining his size? That's my question, right? Is he already been that size for some time and he's just maintaining it? Now, I will tell you that uh, some of the advice that I give to people, they, they choose to take and they choose not to take. And, and I will tell you that this is a key piece of advice if you're really trying to put some size on in the gym. Being that it's fall time, this is definitely a time to put some size on if you're looking to increase muscle mass. Uh, you know, the, the beaches are starting to wind down. Things are cooling off. Uh, where I live up here in North Texas, you know, the pool, we have a pool, but 
we don't really enjoy it that much after about the middle of October because it starts getting a little cool around here. So with that said, you know, you're wearing more clothes. This is the time to start eating and putting that size on. And you might say to yourself, you know, uh, and I've been there, you know, I've been uh, overweight. I've been skinny. I've been ripped. I've been whatever you want to call it, all the spectrums of body shapes and sizes. And it's really simple. When you are looking to build muscle, you have to feed your body. And yes, you do need to eat some carbohydrates. And yes, you need to eat some fats. And yes, you need to eat proteins. The issue is, is when you're trying to continue to fast and put size on, it just doesn't work. Okay. You have to eat. And what I mean by eat is you really have to eat. And if you're a hard gainer and I'm personally, I'm not a hard gainer. I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, I walk by food. I pick up weight relatively easy. Um, if you're a hard gainer, you really need to eat, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, what you would call skinny fat and they just don't have a lot of muscle mass on them and they can pretty much eat or graze all day long and they don't really gain any weight or lose any weight, but they're not really putting any muscle on those types of people. If you put them on a strong, rich diet in carbohydrates and fats along with protein, but a high carb, high fat diet and put some heavy weights in their life, they will grow some serious muscle quickly. You know, I will tell you that uh, there's advantages to being a guy that can pick weight up easily because you don't necessarily have to eat a huge surplus of calories to put the muscle on, right? So if you've already been a former fat guy like myself uh, that has gained and lost the weight multiple times over, I've been shredded, been jacked, whatever you want to call it, um, I will tell you, I will tell you that you have the best of both words because number one, you know how to lose the weight to even start eating to put mass back on. And you will not, let me repeat this, you will not repeat the same mistake twice if you're a grown man and you've learned your lesson the first time around. If you haven't learned your lesson, this advice isn't for you. So how I know you're not eating. Okay, a lot of the gents that I work with and talk with on the day-to-day -day basis that aren't putting on any kind of size in the gym or any kind of strength gains under the bar, you can tell because they the, the needle's not moving, okay? They're not getting any bigger. They're not looking any thicker. And what I mean by that is like when you see a guy and he turns, you know, like left or right, he's not starting to look dimensional. And what I mean by that is he's starting to get thick up around his upper body, you know, from his chest to his back and from across his shoulders, his neck area, you know, that's not starting to thicken up. Um, generally, if you're on a good program and you're eating plenty of food, let me repeat that eating plenty of food, you will definitely build some size relatively quickly. Um, and what does that look like? Okay. So for me in my personal journey right now, and what I'm going through uh, with my coach is he's got me eating quite a bit of calories. You know, I'm eating anywhere on my rest days from like 2,500 calories to, to 3000, depending on the day. And on my training days, around 2,000 calories, okay? And that's because I've been dieted down for so long, it's taken me a long time to get used to eating again. And what I mean by that is I was running around at 16, 1,700 calories a day. And basically, I'd finally hit a, a point in my training career that, okay, I can't get any more lean. Um, whatever's left is skin. And um, I can't build any more muscle because I'm not eating enough food. And so that's the big thing, right? Is figuring out ways to feed your body. So I'm basically trying to tell you something right here with my personal experience. My personal experience and what my coach is having me do is basically increase my food incrementally over time. And so if you are have been dieting down, and what I mean by that is you're, if you're a big faster or if you're somebody that's uh, basically withheld nutrition from your body for multiple years, it's going to take you some time to get used to eating again. Okay. And that's why, honestly, you aren't seeing any strength gains. You've hit those plateaus or you're just not gaining any more size is because you're not feeding yourself. Okay. And so you're probably going to need some cheat meals in there. You're probably going to need, and let me repeat this. You're probably going to need to eat every day, three to four squares a day, and then have some cheat meals in on top of that to get your body used to start growing again. You have to provide your body with an anabolic environment, okay? A lot of people think that, oh, I can just go, I've got a fat wallet, I can go get some gear, and I can just start jacking, 
and uh, basically just put on all kinds of size. That's just simply not the case. You need food to grow. And there's been a, a, re, a trend on social media lately. If you really pay attention, there's been some key players out there on the social media platforms kind of teasing guys that are obviously on steroids. But I'm here to tell you, uh, yeah, they're doing that gear and they're professional athletes, but they're also eating a heck of a, a lot of food. And it takes that food for you to grow. Steroids, believe it or not, or gear uh, is like a shiny clear coat on an awesome paint job on a hot rod. Okay, so basically you... Uh, would utilize those towards the end. You don't necessarily need to do those during a mass phase. I'm telling you, food is the key. And what I mean by that is plenty of carbohydrates, plenty of fats, and plenty of proteins. As a matter of fact, nine out of 10 people in the gym are malnutrished when they're trying to train to build muscle. And I can I can promise you that the other one, the other guy, the the one that's all by himself, he's got the game and he realized, hey, I'm gonna I'm going to put a little bit of size on around the middle and that's okay. Let me repeat that. That's okay. Cause I know how to take it off. I can strip that fat back off and I'll re reveal all the muscle that I put on over the winter months. Understanding and knowing that you can do that is the first key to the kingdom, right? Is okay. I'm going to pick a little bit of weight up, but I'll be able to strip it right back off and show those muscles off when it's time. And so eating enough. Okay. And so you see this big thing out on social media too, as well. And I'm completely opposite on this one. And that's eat your breakfast, man. Uh, I got one guy, he's like, you know, Phil, I haven't really lost any weight. I've, I've lost a whole bunch of weight and then I'm just stuck here. And I'm like, okay, so tell me, tell me about what you eat. Well, I normally don't eat till one o'clock. So basically from dinner till about one o'clock in the afternoon, this gent doesn't feed his body. Well, guess what happens is metabolism's asleep. And he's not getting any stronger. That's because his muscles don't have any fuel. He's completely tanked his body. So I told him, I don't care what you do or what you eat. Just eat breakfast every day. Start with that. And I will tell you, I will tell you, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this guy because he's got this huge weight loss goal in mind and he's really working towards that. But you know, it's, it's, it's counterculture to eat breakfast in this day and age. And I don't understand why, you know, our, our ancestors ate breakfast, everybody, our forebears, our forefathers in the, um, in, in the past here, they would get up and have a hearty breakfast and work in the fields all day or, or work in the coal mines or whatever, and have lunch and then, you know, home for dinner. And maybe mama had a nice apple pie or something for them to dine on after dinner before they hit the hay at night. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with breakfast, okay? And you need to eat at key times throughout the day. So let's start with breakfast and why that is such an important time and why you need it. If you're trying to build muscle, let me repeat this. If you're trying to build muscle in the gym, you need your breakfast, okay? You're not going to do that fasting. What you need to do is, <laughs> Anthony Miglarino says, how many calories is is for breakfast, for a good breakfast. Well, it depends on the, the person and their nutrition strategy, my friend. But I would tell anybody that a good solid 500 calories of breakfast with carbohydrates, lower fat, and a higher protein meal will definitely bring them success in the long run when it comes to whether they're trying to lose weight or build muscle in the gym. This one's about how I know you're not eating. And I will tell you that knowing that you're skipping breakfast, you're already diminishing your, your possibilities of gaining muscle. And through that additional muscle that you gain through the food you eat, not two things are happening there. Okay. That anabolic environment is getting kicked up first thing in the morning and your body's going to utilize that fuel to fuel your metabolism all day. Okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with getting up and having something to eat, having some coffee and starting your day. Okay. You don't have to get up and drink some bone broth. You don't have to get up and have bone marrow. You don't have to get up and stand in a quarter and uh, have black coffee and you know, you, you have some breakfast, enjoy yourself in the morning. Okay. Fuel your body. And what will happen is you've provided an anabolic environment for your body to start growing muscle. Now I train in the morning. So I have a little snack before I go to the gym in the morning just to kind of kick things up. And then I go train and then I come home and I wolf down. And I will tell you that on my training days, I'm eating approximately 150 grams of carbohydrates every meal right after I train. 150 grams, 50 grams of protein and very low fat. 
Um, and then I move on to my lunch meal, which is generally a very, very high protein fish meal, green vegetables, high fat. And then I also have another high fat meal and high protein meal in the afternoon before I go home. Now, when I do some serious training on the weekend, Saturdays are our big days. Coaches got me eating and I will no, I'm not joking. You can check me out on my fitness pal. You'll see it in there. Um, he's got me, he's like, you know, 12 ounce ribeye, huge pieces of bread, white potato, butter, uh, croutons, uh, with my Caesar salad. And, um, so we got this, we are, we're using Newman's own, which is good. It doesn't have any, I know everybody's like, oh my God, he's eating seed oils. He's going to freaking explode. Well, this one's made out of olive oil. So don't worry. We're doing okay. And it's actually real butter, not margarine. So, but I will tell you that he has me eating massive amounts of calories before I have very intense training sessions. And guess what's happening? My strength gains are growing by the week. And I mean linear growth. And I will tell you that food is the key to it all. And knowing that it's not going to hurt you, but it's only going to help you. So back to breakfast and knowing that if you start your day with a meaningful breakfast, that could be scrambled eggs some sausage, a couple pieces of toast. If you're a morning trainer, you might just want to have a snack, maybe a little energy bar on the way to the gym, a cup of coffee. And uh, definitely, definitely, definitely go train your butt off in the gym. And then when you get done with the gym, guess what? Boom, come home and have breakfast again. This gent right here says, Phil, this is JB. JB, thank you so much for popping in, my friend. He says, listen to him, gents. He has, has me looking better than I ever than I ever have in my life, and I'm not done yet. JB, your gains and your strides and growth in all areas of your life have been nothing but miraculous to be a part of, my friend. And I thank you so much for trusting in me and helping you uh, guide you down your little journey that you're going on. And it is just an impressive thing to watch, man. You have just like unlocked it, man. And you're on it. You It's what, what like my coach tells me, you're in it now. And it's like great to watch, man. And I'm so happy that you're just getting success and success and success after success. So, man, it's just great to be a part of. And thank you so much for popping in, man. But I will tell you that, and JB, guess what, has breakfast every day. He's a, he's a hard worker in the gym and he comes home and has breakfast. And when you eat, you provide an environment for your body to grow. Okay. And when you're a big faster, if you're somebody that skips breakfast, guess what happens? There's no environment for your body to use. There's no food for it to use to grow. And so people are left wondering, well, why aren't I losing weight or why am I not building muscles? Because you haven't fed your body. The human, the human body requires calories to grow and get stronger, okay? The physical attributes of weight training in the gym basically tax the muscle and to make it adapt, okay? The food that you eat, let me repeat this, the food that you eat fuels your recovery. Knowing that you need carbohydrates to not only fuel your body but also help your body recover is key. Knowing that carbohydrates are 100% on your side when you're trying to build muscle is a thing. Um, I will tell you on my post, my post training meal on Saturdays. Now keep in mind, Friday nights I have that ribeye, the big, big sourdough bread, uh, uh, the salad, you know, Caesar salad with croutons the baked potato, uh, he has me go out and eat, or I eat at my house. Now, um, he wants me to have as much as I can possibly get down after my training. And I, and I take this big, long muscle nap. And, you know, I will tell you when I get done training on Saturdays, I'm eating anywhere from, I don't know, 200 to 250 grams of carbohydrates in one sitting and anywhere from uh, 60 to 80 grams of protein and probably 40 to 50 grams of fat in one meal. Okay. And then I have probably three more meals throughout the day. And it's because I'm trying to build some size on my frame. Okay. I'm trying to get my body to start growing again. And the only way to do that is to stimulate it with food. Okay. So as you train in the gym, muscle adaption will take place as long as you fuel it with the food. You've got to have that food in there. And how I know you're not eating enough is because you're spinning your wheels. Gent after gent I come in contact with, they tell me all the time, well, I've hit this plateau, man. I can't get, I can't. I can't get the squat past 360 or I can't get the deadlift past, I don't know, 425 or I can't, 
I can't do more than 15 pull-ups. The 15 pull-ups things is more, more or less psychological than anything. But I will tell you that the key lifts in the gym, your presses, your squats, your deadlifts, all these things, you will hit a plateau if you don't have enough fuel to fuel it, fuel that training, knowing that you can change it by just simply eating more food. You have to understand that food is not designed to, we have been conditioned with social media and all the media input inputs that we have, that food is just the worst thing ever. And I'm here to tell you, that's just not the case. Now there's a lot of foods out that are bad for you. And those are the foods you need to watch out for. I'm not telling you to go out there and wolf down on a box of pop tarts or order a pizza or, you know, eat garbage all the time. I'm telling you have wholesome, healthy foods, you know, like clean sources of carbohydrates, you know, potatoes, rice, vegetables, clean sources of protein, you know, whey protein powder, uh, vegan protein powders, uh, lean cuts of beef, uh, fatty cuts of beef. If you want a fatty steak every once in a while, chicken, pork, fish, um, you know, you know, fats, good sources of fats, nuts, olive oils, coconut oils, these things, you know, there's ways to fuel your gains the appropriate way. And then there's the lazy way where you can just go through and just wolf down on whatever you want. Basically, um, you will have to understand that it's okay to eat again. And we've been so conditioned with social media that, oh, it's, you know, I'm too busy with my my side hustle to eat breakfast, or I'm too busy with the kids to have something to eat. Why don't you sit down and have breakfast with the kids? Change your life, change your lifestyle. It'd be, I'm telling you, if you're spinning your wheels in the gym, nine times out of 10, if your training is on point, it's because you aren't eating enough. And that is precisely how I know. There's a lot of guys out there that wonder how I eat the way I do. And I just train my butt off, but I also eat like, like there's no tomorrow. Uh, there's been a couple of times where I've been in social situations that I've shown these gents, hey, it's no big deal to wolf down on like three pieces of cake. There's no reason to fear carbohydrates. What you need to fear is your lack of discipline and your lack of self-respect for not wanting to do what's best for your body all the time. No one's saying don't enjoy those foods. I'm just telling you, be cautious with them, right? And when you work on that, when you work on that modality in your mind and that discipline, you say to yourself, you know, I want to put this size on, but I want to do it the right way. What you want to start doing is eating the kind of foods that are going to help you grow. And so some of the foods that will definitely help you grow. And uh, if you're vegan, um, you know, you can definitely do some plant-based options. Uh, but I will tell you that one of the solid go-tos, if you're trying to put some size on in the gym, is going to be red meats. Uh, red meats will definitely help you grow. Uh, you know, you see a lot of uh, social media posts where guys are eating broccoli and chicken breast all the time. There's a time and place for that, but that's not the time right now. This is the time for you to get in the gym and lift heavy and eat big and grow some size and put some size back on you, right? Because I'm here to tell you, as long as you're eating, your training will be on point and you will grow. Um Another thing too is the stimulus that you give your muscle. You know, if you're overeating and understimulating your muscle, yes, you will pick up more fat than you do muscle, but you can calibrate that. And there's a learning process. Everybody's biology is different, right? So don't fear that. Don't be afraid to eat. Just figure out how your body operates best. A lot of people will say, oh, well, my body operates best if I only eat if I don't start eating until noon and I'm like, okay, you know, so basically you're fasting from dinner till noon the next day. You know, that's what anywhere from 14 to 16 hours of not eating, you will not build muscle. Now, if you're morbidly obese or somewhat overweight and you're cutting the food out to a point, you will lose weight and build muscle and recomp. But I will tell you that you will plateau. Understanding that food is your friend and all types of food are really your friend as long as they aren't poisonous, they will make you grow. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's one of the things I've been struggling with for the last, I guess it's been five weeks now since I've been in it is um, with co with my coach is basically, you know, getting the food down, you know, he's his, the requirements that I need to eat more. And I'm really, I'm still struggling with that one. And that's how I know I'm not eating enough because my coach is like taking me to that limit and he's going up, you need more food. 
when I can't hang with it, it's because I don't have enough fuel in the tank to handle my business. And uh, I'm not saying that I'm weak by any means, but I'm definitely learning about how important nutrition is and 100% how important eating a surplus of calories is for what I'm doing. You know, realizing that you're cheating yourself and wasting your time in the gym all because you refuse to eat is a crazy thing. You know, uh, why not enjoy yourself? You know, people limit themselves. Uh, you know, they don't, they go on these fast crazes or they don't eat carbohydrates. Now, if you have any kind of food sensitivities or something like that, or your carbohydrates upset you, then I understand. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. You, you have specific issues that arise when you eat carbohydrates. Okay. I get it. But if you want to put any kind of sizable, any kind of sizable mass on, you're going to have to eat carbs, man. You're going to have to eat a lot of them. I will tell you this. And you guys are probably going to fall out of your chairs right now. Anybody that's listening or might watch this later, a, a vegan bodybuilder, man, if you don't know anybody that's vegan and that, that are, that are truly like a professional bodybuilder, get online and check these dudes out, man. It's because of the carbohydrates they eat, right? And the kind of nutrients they're taking in their body. They're really fueling their recovery. They're really fueling their workouts. Being a vegan and being a bodybuilder, man, it's lit. These guys can jack up. I mean, it's it's incredible to watch and see. Now, I'm not saying that it's superior in one way or the other. Okay, if you're vegan or if you're if you're if you eat meats, I'm just telling you that there's that's signaling something there for you to understand. And that is that carbohydrates are so important for your body to operate and maintain and function. When you withhold carbohydrates from your body for extended periods of time, you become glucose deficient. Okay. And, and, you know, the carnivore guys are going to hop on this video and say, Oh, Phil, you know, that your body can uh, generate glucose out of meat products and fats and lipids and all that good stuff and get all scientific with it. And I'm going to say, yeah, but that's like the, the long way around, right? Why would you want to take the long way when you're actually trying to do something in the gym? Why would you want to hinder your workouts if you don't necessarily need to why? Why waste your time doing it? Understand that you need more food, okay? And and for and, and and we need to calibrate that for everybody because everybody's different. You know, each and every person has got their own biology, their bodies process and and and, and work in different ways. One person might do exceptionally well on four or five hundred grams of carbohydrates a day, where the next gent, like myself, I, I my my cap is around two hundred and fifty to three hundred a day. You just don't know until you start experimenting. And that's the big thing about it, right? Is understanding that foods, foods are an experiment with your body. Okay. And when you discover, okay, these foods make me feel this way and these foods help me grow in this manner, then you can really start dialing that in. And it just takes some practice and understanding and realizing that you're worth it. You know, if you're going to waste your time and and just spin your wheels, then, then, then what's the point, right? I mean, if you're in the gym, you're trying to put some size on, man, you got to eat and you got to eat a lot of food, you know, depending on your goals, my goal, I've got some pretty big goals coming up for this next year. You know, I really won't drop them here on, on social media. I'm just kind of staying pretty quiet about it, but I will tell you that I am definitely eating for my goal. And I was informed actually on Saturday that I will be getting more calories prescribed to me in the coming weeks. Um, and because he knows what my goals are and what we're trying to build and get to. And that's the big thing, right? Is figuring out a way to get what I want out of the food and my training to get the maximum results. You can swing on over to philfosterfitness.com and you can check out, we have subscription-based training over there. And uh, I do online training and one-on-one -on -one training with folks all the time. And I will tell you that it's amazing to watch these people uh, learn so much about who they are and their biology and understand that it's just these simple little tricks and alterations and who, what they're doing in their day-to-day -day lives. And it's like, boom, they unlock. It's kind of like, uh, like JB saying that he is 100% better than I've ever in my life. He's looked, you know, and he's not done yet. I mean, this, this is, this is the big thing, right? Uh, is understanding that it's 100% attainable for you. You just can't fear it, you know, and so many people want to fear it. The family alpha says not hitting goal, goals alone. Get yourself a call with Phil. He'll have you locked in quick. 
my man at the Family Alpha, Zach Small, the, the leader, creator, and owner of the Fraternity of Excellence. Thank you so much, sir, for that, that very kind compliment. I appreciate that, and I appreciate your vote of compliments, confidence Excuse me, and the opportunity to work with you as well. It's been a, a, a blessing to watch you grow and build the muscles up, man, and watch that Barney Rebel come out in you, man. You're starting to get a little jacked up over there. And uh, super proud of all your gains, brother. The uh, knowing that food will fuel all that and definitely help you get to that next level. Don't be afraid of it, right? We've been conditioned in social media to be afraid of food. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get fat if I eat that. But you know, the interesting thing is, is folks will starve themselves all the time and withhold, 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 withhold uh, food. Zach says, I'm a living testimony. Thank you, brother. No, thank you so much for everything, my friend. And they'll withhold food. They'll withhold it all week long when they're at work and on the weekends, they'll completely blow it, right? They'll go crazy and they'll go out with the fam and have pizzas. They'll eat whatever. In, so they're kind of putting garbage in. So all those, all that time of withholding food, they've eat, they're eating trash. You know what I mean? And so it's just like cancels itself out. And it's actually worse because the simple fact is, <clears throat> that, let me repeat it. The simple fact is that you've been fasting that and guess what? Your body says, Oh man, we got some calories. Now we're going to hold on to these bad boys. And so you end up, you end up with more adipose tissue than you had before. That's why I say when you're trying to build muscle, when that, when you're trying to build muscle, that just doesn't work. You know, you have to be a little more structured. And so I want you to think about having like maybe four squares a day, right? You might have breakfast, you might have a morning snack or an afternoon snack. You might have lunch and then you might have dinner. Okay. And then we go from there and we start dialing it in, but I guarantee you, you're not eating enough food now. All you have to do, uh, it's kind of like one of the benefits of training with the, the gents that I work with is we have this app and it tracks your gains, right? It tracks how strong you're getting. It tracks all these metrics, right? And understanding where you're going. Are you gaining strength? Are you gaining some size in the right areas? Are you losing the weight that you're trying to lose? Is your body becoming more efficient? Are you adapting to the training st stimulus? If none of those things are happening, my suspicion is you probably need to eat a little bit more food. Okay. And then adjust your training stimulus, realizing, let me repeat this, realizing that 100% it is correctable if you would just eat more food. Um, I will tell you that being a former fat guy myself, and yes, I've been thin and then I got overweight. I was had a problem with some alcohol there for a minute, went through a nasty divorce, watered it all down with some, with some, uh, wild Turkey one Oh one. Um, I will tell you that it was difficult, you know, and then I lost the weight. And for, for a guy like me, that's been, been overweight before I look in the mirror and I go, geez, man, this is a lot of food. And there's the psychological side of it, right? You have to accept, you have to accept that it's going to be okay. And as long as you're training, as long as you're training for it, you will definitely get what you want out of it. Okay. And what you're eating. Now, uh, my buddy, Anthony, his wife has these, um, does these amazing, she's an amazing baker. Okay. Like if you saw her stuff, it's like super crazy, right? I mean, she does these cakes and these cookies and it's like, dang. And, um, I'm telling you, if you're eating garbage all the time or like super high quality baked goods, uh, maybe cut those down a little bit, eat those around your training window. Uh, believing it, believe it or not that baked good before you hit the gym, if you got to have a cinnamon roll. Eat the cinnamon roll and go hit the gym and watch what happens. Boom. Everybody demonizes insulin. I will tell you that insulin is one of the best muscle growers out there. You trigger some insulin in your body and you stimulate your muscles through weight training. And guess what's going to happen? Boom. You will grow. And uh, this is verifiable 100% that insulin is one of the most anabolic compounds out there. It's interesting that a lot of pro bodybuilders, believe it or not, that aren't diabetic will supplement with insulin injections to actually put more size on. And they aren't doing that for the fun of it. They aren't doing it just, for, okay, is another shot. Uh, they're trying to get that insulin to get triggered, man. You know, and they're trying to put some muscle on. 
And that's what it takes, right? Is that insulin being triggered. And that's where that growth is going to happen. And that's why I want you to eat carbohydrates, you know, and if you're trying to put some muscle size on, you know, I want you to train super hard and I want you to eat. And what's that look like? Hey, you might want to go out and get like a cheeseburger and fries every once in a while. It's kind of like my man, JB, that commented earlier that says he's, he's not done yet. He's kicked butt so hard. I told him, I said, hey, why don't you go out and get you the biggest meal you want, man? Go eat whatever you want. Just tear it up. And he did. And it didn't affect him one bit. And that's because his training is on point. And understanding that as long as your training is on point, you can feed your training through good nutrition and you can grow. Figuring that out takes a little bit of time and a little bit of understanding. It's not something you want to do right off the bat because the simple fact still remains is you need to strip the fat away first before you can start doing that. Now, let's talk about folks that are trying to lose some weight. And actually, what I mean by that is people that are in a process of like either recomping or trying to shred down a little bit for summer or spring or like for a wedding, for instance, just trying to drop a few pounds. What happens is, is they start starving themselves. And, and, and once again, your metabolism starts crashing. Okay. And what happens when your metabolism starts crashing is boom, you stop losing weight. You have to eat enough to fuel your metabolism. Your metabolism will protect your muscle. Number one, with having those nutrients in your body, you won't start chewing on your muscle. You will burn on those fat cells in your body. You will start utilizing that fat as energy. And that is a super important thing to understand. Okay. So uh, if you're relatively overweight, and what I mean by that is like 40, 60, 70 pounds overweight, and you choose to fast, that's okay. But it's only going to get you to a point, then you're going to need to start eating some food. Okay. You got to stimulate you have to stimulate your metabolism, okay, for it to work all the way. If you continue to starve yourself, you will start losing muscle tissue. And that's a really sad thing when people start dieting down and they got to really be careful with that. The guys that I work with, I really take, I really watch them close because I want to make sure that they're eating enough food to shield the muscle that they've worked so hard to put on. When you're fasting and you're weight training, you are doing nothing but chewing on muscle tissue. So, um, and, I, and I'm, pff, here, let me go ahead and own it right here on, on YouTube right now. I have personally trained fasted before first thing in the morning without a thing in my belly. And I wondered why my muscles weren't growing. It took me learning the hard way. So learn from me now and understand that fasted training is good to a point like fasted cardio. But if you're in there weight training and you're trying to put muscle on, stop it. Go eat something before you go to the gym. Now, if you're trying to lose weight and, and recomp your body or shred some, shred some fat, I will tell you that getting up in the morning and having your coffee and training is okay. Let me repeat it. It's okay as long as you get done training and go home and eat. Okay, these people that train and they wait three, four, or five hours, guess what's happening right then? Your body's chewing on the muscle tissue that you have. Those branch chain amino acids that you've ingested have now uh, that were converted into muscle tissue uh, from the damage that you did in the gym are now being broke down by your body and utilized to fuel it. You need to realize that you can train fasted and lose weight, but make sure you eat some breakfast right after you train in the morning. Now, if you're in the if you train in the afternoons, if you train in the afternoons, I will tell you that you have a more you have a better chance of putting size on. Anthony Mugarino says, my wife and daughter bake sweets, but working with Phil for, but with, but what, excuse me, but working with Phil for a few months, I almost have a six pack again. My man, my man with another plan. It's a six pack, six pack plan. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah, man. And that's good for him because he's down there where the sun's at now. He's no longer where it's cold and snowy. He's down where the sun's at. So, you know, walking around jacked and tan's a good thing. <laughs> I'm super proud of you, man. I'm super proud of you, bro. I'm super proud. The um, understanding, understanding 100% that you can lose weight and with fasted training, but as long as you eat some breakfast, you won't lose any muscle tissue or you mitigate the damages of fasted training by immediately eating afterwards. Don't drag your feet out when it comes to it, okay? Make sure you get your nutrition in. Make sure that you're eating enough for your goals. So if you're trying to put some size on, you can calculate your body weight times, I could say like 14. Take your body weight, multiply times 14. 
And that should be a good starting point for you. You know, make sure you're getting anywhere from any one and a half to two grams of carbs per pound of body weight. Uh, you know, a gram and a half uh, per pound of body weight on the protein and the rest fats, and you should be gold there. Um, it's the same thing if you're trying to lose weight. You know, you could calculate down from like times ten. You know, take your body weight times ten. You know, keep the keep the carbohydrates uh, relatively early in the day, and then stick to fats and proteins in the evening. If you want to know more about that, you can book a call with me at philfosterfitness.com and we can discuss those things easily and get you on the right track if you're having trouble understanding that. And knowing that you do have a choice in this matter, right? Knowing that there's no reason to go through life suffering because you're friggin' hungry, okay? There's just no reason for it. Food availability in this day and age, there is no reason for you to starve yourself, okay? And there's plenty of good healthy food options out there for you to eat many times a day and not become obese. It's all about that discipline and having that self-love and being able to savagely say to yourself, look, this is what I want. And I want you to, I'm going to go take this from the world. Having that irrational self-belief, right? And that's what the growth cast is all about, right? Being able to savagely take what you want in health, wealth, and relationships, health being number one, because if you're not healthy, how can you go take from the world? How can you lead your tribe? How can you be a success if you aren't healthy? You know, you need, you need your health first and foremost, before anything else in this world, you need your health. Okay. You know, some people might counter that and say, oh, well, you got to have God first and that's cool. You know, whatever, dude, you know, my point is, is you got to have your health first to have everything else in order, you know, and we hear all these cliches all the time, you know, build the man and it's going to save the tribe and save the family and the community and, and, and the state and the world and all that stuff. And that is true, but it all starts with getting the man to understand and have that self-love. Let me repeat that. Having some self-love through and, and expressing that through some discipline and what he's eating and how he is training to build the best version of himself. That's the only way you can savagely take from this world. You cannot lay back and expect things to happen for you if you're not out there trying to take it. Um, it just won't happen. And that's the same thing with this, this topic tonight. Um, you have to savagely decide in your mind, Hey, my goal is to lose weight and, 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 and calibrate your nutrition goals to that, to that particular ideal, or, Hey, I'm trying to put some size on now. I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger. I want to put, put mass on, you know, then you need to be a savage about it. You need to say, Hey, this is what I want. This is how I'm going to do it. And no one is going to, to deviate me from that. This is what I want out of all of this. Okay. And growing is what this whole discussion is about is figuring out a way to get you to eat more food and realize that it's going to be okay. Guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you eat like a bird, you're going to look like a bird. Okay. And what does eating like a bird look like? Doing fasting. Okay. Men eat. Okay. They enjoy their food. Their women cook and the men eat it. That is how nature intended it, except for grilling. Okay. Like I'm a big griller. I like to grill at my house. So I like running the grill, but I will tell you that men deserve, if they have their, their ducks in a row, Hey, you deserve to eat, man. Treat yourself, feed yourself, feed your gains, feed your body and realize that you are so worth it.